Luke. I'm your father, Luke. I'm your father. Today, I want to talk about something that is pretty serious. This is kind of a no bullshit thing. I know this reeks of bullshit completely, but this is something I wanted to talk about. This is kind of a deadly serious issue. Today, I want to talk about coronavirus and ham radio and how to keep you and me safe, this time on K6UDA Radio. All right, my friends, despite all the, despite all the uh, accoutrements that I've got on and all the, the funny games that I like to play with you guys because it is fun and I don't like to take life too seriously. Today I am talking about a fairly serious subject. Well, actually, it's a very deadly serious subject and uh, it is keeping you and I safe uh, this year. It is with the C word and I can't even say it on YouTube. Here's how stupid YouTube is. If I say the word, I will be demonetized. So I'm going to call it the virus. If I say the virus name, <laughs> YouTube will uh, flag this video. So I'm not going to. I'm doing this video today because I actually want to keep you and me safe during this uh, uh, this flu season, this the virus season. And honestly, uh, let's face facts and not mince the words. In this hobby of ham radio, at 58 years old, I am now considered a young man. This hobby is filled with the prime demographic of people who are most affected by the virus. So that's why I decided I'm gonna do this video. It's really not about ham radio, it's about how to keep us safe. In the last couple of days, my uh, local ham club has followed the, uh, the advice of the county health professionals, uh, and we have gone ahead and canceled our monthly meeting our monthly breakfast, our uh, upcoming uh, our upcoming ham radio testing session, and most importantly, we've postponed our uh, annual ham swap uh, ham fest. Almost exactly on the heels of that, the International DX convention held every year in Visalia, California, canceled the uh, canceled the DX convention. There's been several other ham swaps and ham fests across the country that have been uh, canceled at this time. Uh, Major League Baseball has suspended uh, preseason games. The NBA is playing in private. So I don't blame anybody and I don't blame any uh, ham organizations, especially that decide to uh, uh, to play it safe and cancel. For the first time in my life, uh, this is on my bucket list. I am going to Dayton or Xenia uh, for Hamvention. And as of right now, Xenia is still on. It's still going. And I'm very, I'm glad, I'm excited for that. But in that same breath of my excitement, I am also kind of nervous because, you know, let's face it, there's going to be thousands of people. This is a prime big crowd event uh, and it's prime to spread the virus. So what can we do to keep ourselves safe at when we're going to something like this? Now look, I am certainly not a medical professional and anybody who would take medical advice from me uh, deserves to be eating toilet paper and ketchup. 
without me blabbering on any further, here's an expert. Well, as Bob said, I am, I am not a disease expert. Full disclosure on my credentials. Uh, by the way, look me up on QRZ and you'll find it there as N6MED. Uh, I worked uh, in nursing uh, on a medical tel uh, cardiac monitoring uh, floor and so was exposed to lots of cooties and learned about personal protection and things called isolation and so on and so forth. Lately in the press and in general folks have been in my estimation running around like a bunch of chicken littles and this in some respects is getting all blown out of proportion but in other respects it's a matter of caution, prudence, situational awareness. And you've seen a lot of, in the press about what the coronavirus is. It's a nasty cootie that has a higher than usual mortality rate than flu. Uh, more people have died from the flu than the coronavirus, just simply as a matter of numbers. One tenth percent of those who contract the flu succumb to it. One percent of those, at least in the U.S. so far, succumb to the coronavirus. Now, those numbers come from the CDC. They also come from the doctor who is uh, in the White House staff uh, for managing this coronavirus uh, uh, problem. Uh, Coronavirus, like the flu, is spread similarly. That is by way of droplets, think about sneezing or coughing, uh, or by contact. It's also more recently been found uh, and published when the, in the medical literature in the past three days, as a matter of fact, that by fecal shedding, in other words, by way of poop. And this is significant if you think about public toilet facilities. The vast majority of those people who have succumbed to it, that has died, have been older folks with a bunch of other problems going on with them. We call them co comorbidities. These are the folks that are at risk, and especially at risk. And with um, suppressed immune systems. We call them immunocompromised. Those where the risks are. There's the other end of the spectrum. Some people get it and they don't even manifest symptoms. And then there are those in the center. You want to know about the symptoms? Go to the CDC. Dayton is still scheduled and it's still, it's still a go at this moment. Who knows, this could change in a day, a week, or a month. Um, for those of us who are planning on going, I'm still planning on going. How do I best protect myself knowing that I'm going into battle with the germs? How do I best protect myself? So, exposure, public places, uh, social avoidance. We've got a lot of ham stuff coming up. The, we canceled our local club, our ham fest. Uh, Dayton's coming up. Is that going to be canceled or not? So one needs to be in, uh, aware, situationally aware. The current recommendations are to avoid crowds. What's that mean? Well, if a room at a convention is a flea market with lots of stuff on tables, and a lot of people crowd in there, that's a crowd. You've got two or three people in there, it's not a crowd, it, it's subjective. But the closer people are, the greater the risk of exposure. Now, does that mean you want to put on a mask and you want to put on gloves and all of this? Wear a whole body condom? Uh, no, unless it makes you feel more comfortable. It means being aware of those around you. Are they coughing into their elbow uh, or not? Uh, 
and hand washing. Hand washing is a biggie because we want to do this. And you want to avoid that. Eyes are an entry point for nasty cooties. Um, alcohol rub, good to have. Just keep it there all the time on you. And you, if you pick up something off the table and set it down that you're thinking about wanting to buy, hit that, uh, that alcohol rub. Keep it with you. Use it. And you go into the restroom, wash your hands thoroughly, soap and water, and use a paper towel to turn off the faucet. Use a paper towel to grab the door handle to come out. That will minimize your exposure, should certainly mitigate it. And open air, open air spaces. Is this the time to cancel events? Potentially, but that's going to be up to recommendations made by local county health departments, uh, state health department, CDC, general recommendations from the professionals who are monitoring the situation. I emphasize professionals. Forget about Facebook. Forget about your favorite TV news channel where you've got bobbing heads talking about and trying to politicize it. Listen to the medical information from the medical professionals, the CDC, World Health Organization. Live your day-to-day -day life like you otherwise would, but with that situational awareness. Avoiding crowds uh, and hand washing. Avoid touching your face. Be totally aware. Uh, periodically at home, wash down surfaces or wipe them down with maybe a a 10% bleach solution. That's not going to hurt a thing to do that in case anybody's brought anything into the house. Um, and I've foregone shaking hands with anybody. Uh, I sort of reduced myself to a, a fist bump, but I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to do the, the Ebola handshake with the elbow uh, because it's kind of hard to stick my elbow in my eye. Restaurants um, that's an interesting question. I haven't really thought about that myself until maybe right now, but maybe bringing along some wipes to wipe the table down with those, uh, you know, cootie wipes. Because if you watch the way restaurants clean their tables when they're done, they come by with a bus or whatever with a, a, a wet cloth. Uh, are they actually disinfecting it? That's a big question. Um, avoiding crowds if you're on a uh, subway car or something and just distance yourself from others around you if possible. Um, if you're in your own car, non-issue. If you're in somebody else's, I don't know, just think it through. Uh, think about the individuals that your friends that might have been in there to begin with. Um, flying, I personally am not going to fly. Uh, it, they're they're to me, they're cootie um, incubators to begin with. Um, but in that, and when you talk in your mic and you cough, um, just be aware the ham at the other end might catch what you got. <laughs> uh, you gave me a couple of really good tips and, and things that, that to keep in mind dealing in public restrooms. Yeah, think about and this goes in general. I'm cautious of public uh, restroom facilities, but it can be quite scary if you really stop and think about the things that other people touch. <clears throat> Restrooms or wherever, door handles. You don't know where people's hands have been. Uh, certainly in a restroom, you know where they've been and you hope to God that they wash their hands. Uh, money. What do you do about handling money at the, when the clerk gives you bills? Money is probably one of the filthiest things around, you know? Uh, and it's just, it's, it's awareness. It's just awareness and keep the, probably the most single important thing that you can do, whether it be public restroom or wherever, where you've touched something that someone else has touched, is to keep your hands away from your face. Uh, it's How do we deal with that? Asking me for an opinion yeah. on whether it should be canceled or not. And I think it really, it, it's so subjective. 
And I would say that every group should make their own decision about it based on good information, good medical information on what's happening. And where do you meet? Do you meet in a really large room that has a lot of air space to it with 12 foot, 15 foot high ceilings and a large room or a relatively small group meets? Perhaps not. Uh, if you're in a close room, <clears throat> our club meets in a room that has a fairly low overhead and uh, is well attended, so that means we've got a lot of folks in it milling about. I think it was a prudent thing to do that our club uh, officers and board decided to cancel our meetings for the near future. Um, it's just, it's those kinds of dependencies. And, you know, if one sneezes or coughs in an environment like that, that is an unprotected cough, you can have an aerosol spread, which is meaning small drops of saliva or whatever you have. So it should be evaluated on that basis. I, you know, I, I'm not comfortable in giving a flat recommendation to cancel all such events. Now, a consideration for Hamfest, and this is the reason our club did it, is the contact precautions for this contagion. Now, it's open air, which satisfies one safety requirement, if you would, but the other is the touchy-feely, picking up a, a ham radio, a microphone, a component, whatever it is, that 10 people ahead of you have touched. Well, there is potential for transmitting the, the uh, virus. And this is the reason that our club canceled our Hamfest, which is unfortunate because the past four years that we've had, it's become immensely popular. And it's unfortunate. But out of consideration, I think it was a very prudent thing for the club to do. Something that I'm just not accustomed to seeing, though, is the hoarding of toilet paper. I don't get it. People are panic buying toilet paper like they're never going to see it again to the exclusion of food. There's plenty of food on, this, on the store shelves. There's no toilet paper anywhere to be had. So, uh, number one, this is for sale. $30 just for you. Number two, I'm wondering when... Uh, when all the food finally does run out for these folks, I'm wondering if this will taste better with ketchup or mustard. Mmm, I didn't buy food, but I got lots of toilet paper and ketchup, and it's low carb, no sugar. Mmm, that should be good for me. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think. Are you going to Dayton if Dayton is happening? Hey, you know what, maybe this is a good thing for us radio operators because now maybe we'll have, uh, you know, like our monthly meetings and stuff on the radio and it'll promote the hobby. Anyway guys, uh, that's all I've got. Uh, please remember, leave a comment below. Give a nice gloved thumbs up for this video. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification right next to it somewhere, maybe over there. Uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. And there's the email. Guys, I'm Bob, K6UDA. I don't have the virus. And I'm out of here. 7-3.